Yo, what's the deal? You know what I'm saying? It's your boy Cartier. You and Cartier well uh today. We got another reaction video, bro. Man, it's really just that simple. I'm gonna need y'all to like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe, bro. You feel me? Turn on those post notifications. I see y'all running them numbers up, man. Let's get them subscribers up. We on a mission, man. We got Moha shit on the way today. Boosie. I met with Suge Knight in 2008. He wanted to sign me as the next Tupac. Sheesh. Man, I do see similarities in Tupac and Boosie. Do I think Boosie is Tupac? No. But I could see on a marketing scale what Suge might have been doing. You know what I mean? I think Tupac was a little bit deeper. Uh, more, uh, He was more of a philanthropist than Boosie. Uh, I kind of think he stood on like slightly different principles, uh, maybe just more in tune with 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 his black self. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just like his dedication to the community. It was always kind of interesting hearing Tupac speak, you know, and, and Boosie. We, we interested in that. But I think it's it's just a difference uh, on a different level. It's hard to compare anybody to Tupac. But man, let's let's see what uh Suge was really trying to be on. Robbie get money TV. You heard a song called Bullshit where you mentioned Suge Knight. Mm. Yeah. What did you say exactly? Uh, I probably you had to pull it up. He said, uh, "What they gonna say now? Since I'm fucking with Suge, I know mm. who Suge Knight. Suge Knight, I know." Drag my name through the mud. Yeah. Shout out Suge. What's that about? Uh, Like before I went to prison or whatever, Suge had came down there. To <clears> where? <throat> fucking with Baton Rouge. Okay. Yeah. Well, what year was this? Uh, 09, 08, one of them. Mm. Okay. Huh. Okay. Uh, 09, 08, Suge was... Suge was in Baton Rouge. He was talking about signing me, you know. People mm. To death row. He was telling me I was his next Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. So you met up with him? Yeah, I met up with him. Okay. So Bo oh, that's what the people did. Okay. Oh, so Suge Knight called you up and said, I want to meet up with you. Did you have any apprehension at all about meeting up with Suge? No. Nah, because, you know, you heard the stories, obviously, and everything else like that. I was like, I'm like that, too. I mean, <laughs> like, Suge ain't tipped me, I mean. Yeah. Sugar ain't tip when you like that, you don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, so you you had no apprehension. Especially not in my city. Okay. So you showed up. Well, I met Suge in the mall. Suge was smoking mm. a big ass cigar walking through our mall. Yeah. <laughs> Security guard was scared as fuck. But like I'm a gangster. You know, one thing about Suge, his gangster reputation has has stood tall throughout the years. I think that's what we most know him for, just being a dog. Just being, you know, that guy, a CEO and a gangster. And, and he put fear in people's hearts. Boosie said he ain't put no fear in my heart. I was like that. You know, shout out to Boosie. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's kind of cool to see that he wasn't just like that in his area in Los Angeles. He was like that worldwide, wherever he went from New York, Baton Rouge, just across the world. He was that dude, and he he didn't switch up. You know what I'm saying? So I could respect that. Chip it over here. <laughs> Nigga was scared as death for sure. But, uh, we just chopped it up for a little minute. But what was he? Uh, what was he telling you? I won't talk about what all we were talking about. We, <laughs> were, just, we, were, just, we were just chopping it up. Fair enough. Mm. We but you obviously never signed a death row. Nah. Did he offer mm. you a deal, or, or he just said, "Hey, you know, if you're interested, let's follow up." Yeah. Mm. Were you considering it? Yeah. Pop. But you alter. Why did you decide not to do it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, mm. Just wasn't the right time. At that time, I was. I wasn't even really talking to Trill like that. I was trying to focus on my own, my own label. That's when I started putting mm. out my own mixtape. Okay. And I had broke away from. I ain't won't have no balls no more. You know, I want. Oh. I was at a point where I, I want. So Boosie kind of was like, he he considered it. He he respected Suge, but he wanted to be a boss. 
You know what I'm saying? He wanted to have his own thing versus being signed. You know, you heard what he just said. That's interesting. Be the boss. I wanted to call my own shots. Hmm. Well, and to be fair, Death Row was pretty much a rap at that point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't really have any artists that were, you know, Dre, you know, Tupac had obviously died a mm. bunch of years ago. Dre, Snoop, Corrupt, Daz, they were all gone. I think Crooked Eye was on there, but they never really properly put him out. He didn't really mm. blow up until later. So, so Death Row really was kind of a shell of a label. So hmm. you signing there probably wouldn't have benefited you that much anyways. That... It would have benefited me. Just think. Hmm. This the nigga here. Man, man, I was on hmm. fire in 2008. I'm glad I was well, on Well, but I'm saying you would have been doing them more a favor than them. I like how I keep it real. He like, nah, it would have benefited me. I hear what you saying, Vlad, but nah, death row is still death row. And I was hot. So we could have made it happen. Like, we ain't going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, because okay. Because what I'm saying is that by that time, Death Row was essentially blackballed. They didn't even really have distribution. I think they had to end up going to Koch. Yeah, everything happened for a reason. Because when I'm yeah. down with you, I'm down with you. Right. I would have been beef with everybody. Sure, would have been beef with. I would have been. Then they would have been smoke my mouth, you know. You would I would have been beefing. Well, if that's the case, you probably would have been beefing with, with Snoop Dogg. Then I would have been. Anybody, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm rocking with you and I'm... Hmm. You know, I feel like you, you know, you got my back. I'm with you, man. I'm yeah. with you. Mm. Would have been interesting. Boosie on death row, death row Boosie. Nah, facts. I, I feel that would have been something I would have been interested to see. No cap. Hey, man, it's Cartier. You in Cartier world. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, start up that dialogue. What would it, what would Boosie career would have been like if he signed a death row? You know what I'm saying? If he signed a Suge, would that have made him a better artist, a more developed artist, a bigger artist? You know, Tupac had them lyrics that, you know, the people who were signed to Death Row, Snoop, Pac, they, you know, even after, like, you know, after Pac's death, like, it's still nobody liked Pac. That storytelling, that swag, that finesse. Uh, man, uh, Snoop, he went over to No Limit and, and did great things. So, you know, I don't know, man. What y'all think Boosie trajectory would have been, man? Y'all let me know in them comments.